thirdly, fourthly, Venezuela. You and I had a long discussion of this. And I have to be honest with you. Uh, I appreciate what you were trying to do when you met with Deosdado Cabello, who, uh, who is uh, supposedly, uh, by some of our uh, agencies, described as someone who is involved in narco-trafficking. I also realize he has an elected position inside of Venezuela. But uh, that's a question for the future as a policy. How far do we go with individuals who, while they may hold the position, are involved in, the con in this context of narco-trafficking? But in Venezuela, you have a process in which we don't have yet international observers. You have a sham trial where the prosecutor ultimately flees, one of the prosecutors flees the country and says that he was under pressure to ultimately uh, pursue the case in the manner in which he did. Lopez is convicted in a sham trial, I think 13 years in jail. Uh, and you have a series of other human rights activists and political dissidents jailed. And you have the Maduro regime saying publicly, in essence, well, we're going to win the elections, which basically means we're going to win it one way or the other where the polls don't indicate they're willing at the ballot box, but we're going to win it. So my concern is, and the, the thing I think you do bring to this job that others don't have is your combination of Latin America and Africa experience, but my concern is that we are not willing to challenge regimes, whether it be in Venezuela or in Cuba, where we are ceded everything to the uh, regime and have seen nothing, nothing in terms of human rights uh, and uh, democracy issues. So talk to me about challenging a regime when the diplomacy has not achieved what we want. And, you know, we passed this law on that came out of this committee on Venezuela and sanctions. The president invoked some of it. There's still a lot more that could be invoked. But when is the demarcation in which we say, okay, our diplomacy hasn't worked at this point? How do we back it up with some strength? Thank you very much, Senator. And uh, let me thank you for your tremendous commitment uh, to Latin America and also to the State Department and diversity within the State Department. It's been an important motivator for us, an important driver of how we shape uh, the diplomats of, of the future. And in regard to, to Venezuela, we did have a good conversation yesterday, and I appreciated the conversation. I appreciated your point of view. I understand it, and I, I appreciate the concerns that others have expressed. Um, as we look at um, what's next in Venezuela, so much of, of our, our own relationship with Venezuela will depend on what happens uh, around the legislative elections and what happens around the issue of political prisoners. Uh, when I met with Deos Dalo Cabello, uh, as I noted to you earlier, it was with the purpose, first of all, of uh, winning from them a, an, electoral, an electoral date for legislative assembly elections, which we thought was important and essential, first of all, to create a political process that would allow the Venezuelan people to uh, express themselves, but also to begin to create a, 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 a larger uh, environment for dialogue uh, in, inside of Venezuela. Its secondary purpose was to save the life of Leopoldo Lopez, who at the time was in the fourth week of a hunger strike. And we were looking for a, 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 uh, an action by the Venezuelan government that would convince Lopez to come off his strike. Uh, we believe that Lopez, along with the other political prisoners being held, are an essential part of a broader solution to the kinds of internal challenges that Venezuela faces today. And uh, we will continue to advocate for his release as we have done over time. Uh, it should be noted that as we have engaged with Venezuela, we have never backed off our criticism of Venezuela regarding some of its political behavior and activity. And we've expressed our concern about the politicization of the judiciary uh, and the continued holding of political prisoners. And we will continue to do so. As we look towards the elections, um, the ability of the elections to be perceived uh, as free elections and the vote count is valid is going to be a very important part of how we manage the next step in the relationship. And in that regard, uh, the legislation that you worked on and that other members of this committee and Senate worked on will be an important tool for us, and we will use it if necessary. Well, I hope you use the tool. I, I look forward to supporting your... Uh, your uh, uh, confirmation uh, before the committee in the Senate.